Hello, my name is Adam, and today I want to share a few things about St. Patrick's Day that you may not know, and details about Patrick himself may actually shock you. So let's take a look at this article. I'll make sure to leave a link so that you can look at this for yourself. So the Patrick you didn't know. So the questions here pose, who was St. Patrick? What did he believe? What did he teach? And was he really Irish? So St. Patrick's Day is a well-recognized holiday in the Western world celebrated in mid-March with no other Christian holidays around it. St. Patrick's Day has taken on a very festive or partying atmosphere, while many picture wearing green, three-leaf clovers, leprechauns, green beer, and corned beef. Do any of those things really have anything to do with Patrick himself? Do you know who Patrick was and more importantly, what he taught? That's where it gets really interesting. We'll get to that in a bit. So let's start with what most people think they know. We have been told that Patrick was a Catholic monk who brought the Trinity doctrine to the people of Ireland. And along the way, he drove all the snakes from Emerald Isle. He became so renowned that the Catholic Church made him a saint. None of that is true. Not a thing. Patrick's given name was actually Meowen Sukat. He took the name Patrick most likely because of the area he was from in Scotland. That's right, Patrick was Scottish, not Irish. Here's what Patrick said himself of his background. I, Patrick, had Calpornius for my father, a deacon, a son of the late Potitus, the presbyter, who dwelt in the village of Banavan. I was captured. I was almost 16 years of age and taken to Ireland in captivity with many thousand men. Patrick labored for six years as a slave until he managed to escape back to his native Scotland around AD 376. He believed he had a calling from the Most High. However, to go back to Ireland to teach the Most High's word to the people there. The Catholic Church, while having had an impact in England and later Scotland, did not have a significant foothold in Ireland until the 12th century. They didn't even acknowledge Patrick for about 200 years after his death. Patrick was connected to what is known as the Celtic Church. It was very much opposed to what was taught in the Roman Catholic Church. So far, this Celtic Church is sounding good. Check this out. While we have little of Patrick, Patrick's history and teaching written by himself, what's taught about Patrick now didn't surface until about 500 years after his death. It was the Catholic priest Jocelyn, writing around A.D. 1130, who wrote most extensively about Patrick. He ignored much of what was known then about Patrick and inserted a Catholic background into Patrick's story. Patrick never wrote about a connection to Rome or popes, or that his authority came from there. So if Patrick wasn't Roman Catholic, what did he teach? And this is where it gets really interesting. In AD 596, Pope Gregory sent a group of monks to England to try and bring the Celtic Church under the authority of Rome. However, the Celts refused to acknowledge Gregory's authority and rejected the teachings of the Roman Church. Good so far. In Ireland, the monks found that the Celtic Church permitted their priests to marry. Sounds good. They also practiced baptism by full immersion in water. Even better. The Celtic Church also reject rejected the doctrine of papal infallibility and veneration. Excellent. Transubstantiation, the confessional, the mass, relic worship, image adoration, and the primacy of Peter. These are all excellent things to reject. The latter list is of specific Roman Catholic doctrines that the Celtic Church knew were not taught in the scriptures. Patrick also rejected the merging of church and state and main teachings of Catholicism. He believed and taught the same as Messiah in John 18.36, that Elohim's kingdom, the Most High's kingdom, is not of this world. The Celtic Church had local ecclesiastical councils and capped Saturday as the day of rest. Did you hear that? In this matter of a Saturday, the Sabbath rest, Dr. James C. Moffat wrote that they, the Celtic churches, obeyed the fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment, literally upon the seventh day of the week. This is incredible. This is like, this is exactly what's been happening all over the four corners of this earth, people are waking up and saying, you know what? 
We've been lied to. The Catholic Church's doctrines has seeped into almost every corner of belief. Now, while there was a Protestant Reformation, still many of the doctrines and teachings of the Catholic Church still permeate today, Sunday being one of them. Patrick and the Celtic Church observed the other festivals of the eternal found in Leviticus 23. Now listen, that's incredibly important. A lot of people are waking up and realizing that these uh, Catholic, these Roman Catholic um, ho holidays that were that were mixed with paganism is not what the Most High wants from us. He tells us to not celebrate them in the ways that the pagans do. So people are realizing that uh, days like St. Patrick's Day that we're talking about now is not really from the Most High, nor is it found in the Bible. Same with um, you know, Christmas and Easter and all these things. But what's interesting, this Celtic church kept the feast days found in, the, in Leviticus 23. That's you know Passover and Sukkot and many of these wonderful festivals that our Messiah kept. Even Paul says, let's keep the feast. They believe that human beings were mortal. That is, reject the teaching of an immortal soul and the doctrine of going to heaven or hell. I imagine this, is, this has to do with the perversion that the Catholic Church teaches about purgatory and those kind of things. Listen to this. They rejected the Trinity doctrine, followed the food laws of Leviticus 11. So that's in, in, in our modern day, they didn't eat pork and sh you know, shellfish and other forbidden foods found in Leviticus 11. So they kept a clean diet. They refused the veneration of saints or worship of Mary and believed that only Messiah Yahushua, that's, the, that's how we understand our Messiah's Hebrew name, is our mediator, not Mary and all these other doctrines that they, they've been teaching. This is incredible stuff. The Celtic Church had a long history before the Catholic Church pushed deeper into England, Scotland, and Ireland. Celtic writings speak of individuals coming from Asia Minor who brought with them the doctrines they received from John, Paul, Philip, and other apostles of Yahushua, our Messiah. Now, this is really interesting because as of late, uh, many of us have been reading from a book called The Book of the Nazarene. Uh, which is a gospel account that, believe it or not, was passed down by Celtic believers. It sounds like this Celtic church or these Celtic believers were the preserver of some of the true doctrines that our Messiah taught. A Catholic father, Beatty, who lived in the mid-700s AD, who wrote about the Celtic church, said this, They ignorantly refused to observe our Easter, which is a bastardization of the true feast, which is the Passover. So the Celtic church, they ignorantly refused to observe our Easter on which Messiah was sacrificed, arguing that it should be observed with the Hebrew Passover on the 14th of the moon. Incredible. So as it is currently celebrated, St. Patrick's Day actually has nothing to do with the historical man Patrick. Many Christian holidays are a mixture of truth and error. Because of this, most people don't really know the history or purpose of the day. And we'll stop right here. There's more in the article, but that's really what I want to share with you. And this is great because this is a time where a lot of people are coming out of the traditions of man. St. Patrick's Day being one of them, Christmas, Easter, Sunday worship, these things. And this is a blessing. People are coming back to the ancient path of the Most High. If you want to learn more about this ancient path, on our uh, on the um, Parable of the Vineyard YouTube page, right on the front, we have a uh, playlist that may actually bless you. I'm going to pull it up for you so you can take a look at it. So we'll do a quick uh, screen share again. So back on our homepage here, if you scroll down right here to where it says uh, the basics of the way, this playlist right here may help you. If you want to learn more about uh, walking in faith and obedience to the commandments of the Most High, some of the things that Patrick himself uh, kept in the Celtic Church, that may be a blessing for you. It'll be There will be a link in the description box below. Uh, also, the book on the Nazarene free PDF if you want to read that book that many... Uh, many are reading and testing and have, have finding to be a huge blessing. So I uh, hope this information was uh, a blessing to you and uh, shalom.